Welcome to St. Luke Union Church as we celebrate um, this service of witness to the resurrection and the celebration of life of Halle Holforth. Welcome, and you can already tell that it's not going to be your typical service. Um, I almost wanted to stand up when the Bears fight song started coming on as well. But uh, let us open our hearts, let us open our minds to, uh, to the spirit and to all that Hallie was for us and, um, and what she's done for us as well. From the book of Galatians it says, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have closed yourself with Christ. In her baptism, Hallie was clothed with Christ in the day of Christ's coming. She shall be clothed with glory. According to 1 Peter, it says this. It says, Praise be to God the Father, the Son of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose great mercy gave us new birth into living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The inheritance to which we are born is one that nothing can destroy, spoil, or wither. And then from the book of Isaiah, it says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Let's pray. Eternal God, we bless you for the great company of all those who have kept the faith, finished their race, and who now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially this day, we thank you for Hallie, whom you have received into your presence. Help us to believe where we have not seen, trusting you to lead us through our years. Bring us at last with all your saints into the joy of your home. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We live in a new time as, as David is coming forward because uh, before the pandemic we never thought to live stream services such as this for people who aren't able to come, but uh, right it is, it's, on, so. it's on and off. I invite you to uh, enjoy the, the singing and the music of Doug and David. Lord has promised 
Psalms, Psalm 23, and this is a psalm that um, finds its way into services like this uh, very often. It's uh, what I consider a comfort psalm. It's a psalm that many of us had to memorize before our, our confirmation or at some point or another in our church life. So I'm going to read, but I invite you to, to say the words with me as, uh, as you recall them. And it says this, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And then I want to share with you from the book of John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 3. And these words say this. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, be with us this day as we come together to, um, to greet, to celebrate, to share, to uphold one another, to, um, 
take one step in getting accustomed to uh, a new normal. Be with us this day. Fill us with your grace, with your love, and your mercy. Amen. This is my chance to, to talk a little bit about Hallie. I remember my first conversation with Hallie. It was shortly after I arrived here as pastor at St. Luke Union Church back in 2009. And the conversation went something like this. I came from a church in Oklahoma. She said, Oklahoma? What were you doing there? <laughs> I said, well, Oklahoma was where I received my first call to ministry. I grew up outside of Chicago. She went, oh, are you a Cubs fan? <laughs> I said, well, well, yeah, I am a Cubs fan. She said, well, I'll try not to hold that against you. <laughs> Welcome to Bloomington and St. Luke Union Church. <laughs> See, Hallie, um, in all of her kindness and grace and generosity and character, was, was to me, um, this is not derogatory at all, she was like that candy, Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> she could be a little sour, but she always came back and was really sweet. <laughs> For many of us, this last month, though, has been full of, of memories of Hallie. We've been recalling moments in her personal life, in, in her relationship with each of us in, in different ways. We've been remembering her, her participation in the life of, of this church and, and of this community here in Bloomington Normal. When we read about her, um, what was written in her obituary, we recall or even learn about many, many ways that she, she was in service to the greater community. And today, whether we are family members or friends, whether our acquaintance was a matter of, of, of many decades or, or only a few years, um, we have been remembering and we have been celebrating Hallie and giving thanks for her life, a life well lived in, in these past few weeks. And for what she contributed, what she contributed to, to each of us individually and even all of us collectively. Now, as much as services like this are, 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 can be sad, uh, yet they're, they're necessary. One of the things I've always loved to do is to examine what families bring and then place on the tables to highlight the different times in someone's life. I actually have a box as well. And it contains really important things like my high school letters or uh, a gymnastics medal from I don't know when. Important things. But out here, we have things like master's degrees, even trinkets of, of what I call trinkets of glory days. It's enlightening to me to, to go out and to look, and I think for others because, because these documents and these photographs bear witness to, to Hallie's life, and um, often in times when, when we knew her, when we lived in those glory days as well, or just enlightened to times that you had no idea that took place. And it's good because in our time of grief and loss, we can look into the past and, and we can see who she was with gratitude. But what makes final sense of Hallie's life is not anything that, that she did or anything that she was. What makes final sense of her life is not only any golden moment we remember or hear, even those are precious to us. What makes final sense of her life so well lived and the life of any of us is simply the gift of grace, the grace of God that, that she had received and she shared. Grace that was in her, in her entire life. Grace that, that is with her now in her death and, and even how she, how she chose to go. And now a grace we trust, a grace we trust in and we pray for as it bears fruit in the fullness of, of our lives and, and her eternal life. So today, remember and cherish the past, but also recognize that in the past there are, there are glimmers of grace that point ahead to, to an eternal life that, that she is now being embraced in. Today, we are, are right to mourn. We are right to grieve and to cry and to laugh. 
Yet the Christian message of death is not that of simply grief, grief without hope. The ground for this hope is, though, is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ from the dead, which is the first fruits, the gifts of our resurrection, the promises that, that Halley now uh, has been given. Christian faith declares that what God's grace makes real for the faithful is not only deliverance from our earthly home and a reunion, or in a reunion with, with loved ones, it's more than that. But it is one that is, that is an exhilaration of existence whose center is, is with God now. Human fulfillment lies past this earthly life and is found in what the Christian tradition calls a, a vision of God. Hallie bore witness to this truth through her faith, and she did it in several ways. She also bore witness to the truth beyond the world through two characteristics that I think we each um, can relate to very well. <laughs> the first one was her intelligence. The other was her wit. Interesting wit. Often dry, but most often used at the right time. Often. I would say that both worked well for her because when, when you were in conversation with her, you, you needed to be on your toes. You needed to be on your toes. You needed to be sharp enough to understand the funny references that she was making. And oftentimes you missed them. <laughs> Hallie was intelligent. She was a thoughtful person who loved to penetrate past the surface into deeper levels of things. And again, you had to keep up. She didn't let cultural gender norms hold her back from doing what she knew that she could and contributed in ways not typically thought practical for women at the time when she got into them, when she started. She holds a bachelor's degree and a master's degree and then taught mathematics at Illinois State University. And I was talking about this this last week with, um, with Larry Bork. Larry Bork is Ed Bork's son. He's a church member. He's a 99 and a half year old church member. And his comment was, oh, I remember Hallie. She taught me. But I would say that this is a, a reorientation which reminds, re remained hers all the way to the end. A reorientation in our mind about the things that she did and stepped out to do that wasn't typical for, for a woman. Her witness of how life is, is indeed more than it appears and how we are called through the mundane and the culturally accepted to something greater. She worked beyond that. Hallie... <laughs> I said, was also a witty person. Her humor could be, though, it could be dry. <laughs> or as I like to say, a little sour. <laughs> but it was always able, you, we was, it was always able to recognize accurately the human folly and irony of what was going on. But it also came, in most cases, with gentleness as well. She saw the gap between how things are and how things ought to be, and then often found comic relief in their differences. This was really an acknowledgement of, perhaps, of, of humanity's grandeur and also our frailty. I think Hallie's humor prepared her, though, for heaven and, and for the kingdom, um, the kingdom that is now filled with love. There are, are losses of this life that are revealed as, as something other than final. Over folly and tragedy, the strong and the gentle love of God enjoys a decisive victory, revealing the great finality of all things, not as veiled, simply as veiled in tears, but as a realm of, all of laughter. There, there is more there to embrace all that Hallie was that we could ever imagine. I want, to story, I want to share one more story, my personal story. Um, you all know that she played bridge, right? And she played bridge, and I'm sure there's probably some bridge partners here, or people who played with her. Are there? Yeah. yeah. And she played bridge the, the three days before she passed, which just blows me away. 
I, and I know of Bridge. Um, I've never played. And I only know of Bridge because my grandmother played, and she used to collect nickels. Someone's going to have to explain what kind of betting schemes go in the Bridge, but... Um, and, and I told her, I said, oh yeah, my grandmother played. And I, then I also wanted to say that, but I, I never learned how to play. <laughs> and she explained to me, because, you know, bridge is not for the simple of mind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right? A little sour, right? <laughs> then she probably handed me a pie. I don't... <laughs> I didn't take offense to it. Maybe I will if I learn how to break bridge. <laughs> but, but sometimes the burdens and the losses of life weigh heavy on our human hearts. There is from these things, no doubt, something to learn. And the endurance of them, well, they, they can refine our spirit. For Hallie, all this belongs to the past. What she experiences at the present, where she is now and who she is now and whom she is with, um, presents uh, a liberty of God to a degree unprecedented and unexperienced by anything that we can imagine. And it's as if a free spirit is now rejoicing in the presence of God. And now that, well, we can simply imagine... Um, how she has been embraced. Tell stories today. Make yourselves laugh. If tears are shed, that's okay as well. Um, it's, it's a wonderful expression of who she was and how she deeply touched our lives. Um, I, I know that... Um, <laughs> I'm going to see Brandon in the back. Or no, here. Um, she really loved the um, the Sunday meetings on, on Zoom. And her comment was, well, you know, Brandon, he's pretty good with computers. So he set all this stuff up. Um, but she enjoyed the fact that she couldn't believe the idea that she got to see everybody and didn't have to leave the house as well. Remember those, those times and those experiences and those just being virtually together, but you really were together. Go in peace. Embrace her. Know that she was forever going to stay in your heart. And you will remember her in interesting and quirky ways. Maybe when someone has a little sour humor. <laughs> at all. Be at peace. Amen. There is an insert in your bulletin, and we are going to sing. One of our instructions was is that this service needed to not play dirges. So this is a song where um, you all need to sing and embrace and um, enjoy. <laughs> Just follow me. If you want to stand and dance, that's fine. If you want to sit, that's fine, too. But thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. The chorus. Just a closer walk with Thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. This world of toil and snares. If I 
never falter, Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden shares? None but Thee, dear Lord, none but Thee. And when my feeble life is o'er, and time Guide me gently, safely o'er To thy kingdom shore, to thy shore And it's just a closer walk with thee Grant it, Jesus, is my Daily walking close to Thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Amen. You're great. I'm going to invite you to say the Lord's Prayer, just so you know. It's printed in the bulletin. We are a debts and debtors church, so you don't get um, messed up. <clears throat> Almighty God, in Jesus you promised many rooms within your house. Give us faith to see beyond touch and sight some sure sign of your kingdom and where vision fails to trust your love, which never fails. Lift heavy sorrow and give us good hope in Jesus so we may bravely walk our earthly way and look forward to glad reunion in the life to come. Lord, we, we ask you to be with us this day. <laughs> Again, let us laugh. Let us celebrate the gift of the life that you gave Hallie the gift of, of a life that she touched us each with, with her wit, with her gentleness, with simply how she would embrace and smile at us. Let us be comforted to know that she now resides with you in all of your glory, perhaps staring down at us and praying for us. Lord, Watch over us in your grace and your mercy. And let us pray together the prayer that your son taught us when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to enjoy how great thou art, but not as a dirge. <laughs> In awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe. Displayed, then sings my soul, 
my Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. When through the woods and the forest glades I wander, I hear the birds singing sweetly in the trees. When I look down, from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, when Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart, and then I'll bow. In humble adoration And there proclaim My God, how great Thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to Thee How great Thou art How great Thou art Then sings my soul Thought that was not the song I wanted at my service, but now. <laughs> Thank you, Hallie. Um, just, I'm going to offer some, some final words, and then um, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to read the, the poem on the back of the, uh, the bulletin. Um, and when I say amen, that's also grace. Grace for lunch. You are all um, uh, invited. You are all encouraged from my point of view, yes, you are encouraged to come and share lunch down in the lower level of, of the church. You can take steps out just to the left of the sanctuary when you walk out, or there's an elevator. Please come and eat. If you don't, then I get forced to eat it all next week. And it's, think of the health of the pastor. <laughs> but it is also a wonderful time to, uh, to share and to tell more stories and to... Uh, and to be with one another. So hear these words. You are only, you only are immortal, the creator and maker of all. We are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. This you ordained when you created us, saying, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave, we make our song singing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with all your saints, where there is neither pain nor sorrow nor sign but life everlasting. 
Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Hallie. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints of light. Amen. You are also encouraged to stand and sing the closing hymn as we process out. <laughs> You'll all know the words. You can shed tears because they are gone. Or you can smile because they lived. You can close your eyes and pray they will come back. Or you can open your eyes and see all that they left for you. Your heart can be empty because you can't see them. Or you can be full of love, um, of the love you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday. Or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember only that they are gone. Or you can cherish their memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind and feel empty. Or you can do what they would want. Smile, open your heart, love, and go on. May God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you today and tomorrow and forevermore. Amen. And Hallie would be happy because there is a 9 o'clock game tonight <laughs> against the Diamond Mechs. Here we go, everybody. Here we go. We're going to sing. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. I don't care if I ever get back for its root, root, root. Ah, Cardinals, if they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old game. Play ball.